Hi, I'm Simon and I would like to talk about a river. My turn. No, not that river, this river. A personal project by uh, me and inspired by a tutorial from Ben. And uh, I extended this river a little bit and would like to talk about how uh, yeah, you do something like that and to give you a rough overview about uh, Houdini and Unreal and how it works. And if you want to um, have more detail, then you can read the whole article and watch the um, several tutorials I did and uh, also watch Ben's original tutorial and all the stuff I linked in the article. So if you are into rivers, this is your day today. What is so special about a river, you may ask? And the unique selling point, as a marketing guy would say, I guess, is that this river is defined by just a spline. And then the whole um, uh, geometry and, and, and uh, terrain is changed based on the river. So that's the, the main focus here. And uh, it's a combination of uh, Houdini and Unreal. And everything started basically with me wanting to learn Houdini. And there was this river challenge in the real-time VFX forum and luckily at the same time I discovered this tutorial by Ben. It was a total coincidence but really lucky for me. Okay, first the terrain. Terrain creation in Houdini is super easy. It was not created in Unreal. Unreal has also a terrain editor. But I created the terrain in Houdini directly there and it's just one click basically. I set up the values a little bit to have not that much detail but yeah, that's another story. And the next step is that you create a spline. And this spline will define where your river flows. And the first step is here to adapt the spline to the height of the terrain. And you do that by taking each of your points of the spline and sending little ways out. And if you hit something, for example the terrain, then you set this point of the spline to the same height of that point of the terrain you just hit. And the next one was really nice. Ben's idea was basically to let the points roll down the hill a little bit to make the spline a bit more attached to the terrain or a little bit more integrated into the terrain. And as I said, he explains everything in his tutorial and uh, you can watch this or you can check out my files and there you will see how this is done. And now it's important to make sure that the river does not go upstream again because the, your terrain has some hills and it might be that the spline goes down and up and down and up and up and down and uh, so on. Yeah, You get the idea. And uh, rivers usually don't do that. And Ben provided a little Python script and this makes sure that the current point is never higher than the point before on the spline. And then instead of having the river flowing down slowly in a, in a soft slope down the hill. The team from Horizon added some stepping to make the river look more natural so that you have more like a flat river flow and then there comes a little step, a little cascade and then a little more flat area and then another cascade again. And this gives a way more structure and way more natural look. And here comes something which I integrated. I compare the slope between the points. And if the slope goes down, then I mark this point with a little vertex color. In my case, it's a uh, turquoise. And then when the river uh, stops being steep and goes into flat terrain again, then I take a node in vertex color basically by colorizing it red. Uh, this will be important later for placing particle systems at the top and the bottom of the waterfall. Okay, and here this looks a bit more complex, but bear with me. When you watch the tutorial from Ben, it will be all clear and every step is explained. But here, just in short, this is how you create the geometry for the river bed. As you see, there's one spline first, and then lines with the total width of your river bed are placed along this, this spline. To, to you, you copy them to every point. And out of this, you create another set of lines some of them are raised, some of them are lowered a little bit to give the river more depth. And this is your basic geometry of the river. And this will now be integrated with your terrain. This will be basically the negative shape you cut out of your terrain. And how you do this? You do this by first lowering the whole terrain. And then for every point of your terrain, you send out little ray casts again, this time upward. And when you hit the river geometry, uh, the river bed geometry we just created, right? Then you move these points upward uh, to the same height. Basically, it's the same what we did before with um, attaching the spline to the terrain. But now we attach the terrain to the river bed geometry. 
And everything which did not hit anything gets back the original height. And that's how you combine your, your river with the terrain so that now you have a basically carved out shape and yeah, your river is just integrated into the terrain. So congratulations. And here you see the big strength of the whole system because now you can change the shape of the spline and zack, the terrain is just adapting and the river and everything and it looks natural and looks amazing and if you are not satisfied then you do one click and you change the whole river so um, yeah this is this is the the power of the procedural workflow and the last step before bringing this to Unreal would be to um, convert this to polygons and optimize it a little bit Houdini offers really nice uh, notes for that for these optimizations and uh, polygon reducing methods and yeah then you are ready to go to import the terrain into Unreal or into uh, Unity. The Houdini engine, by the way, is available for Unreal, for Houdini, for 3D Studio Max, for Maya and for Cinema 4D. And that's another big advantage uh, because you can integrate this asset. You don't have to go into Houdini, change the river there and then save it out as FBX or something and then import it again in Unreal or somewhere else. No, you can directly uh, save your Houdini uh, network tree basically into a so-called HDA file and this can be loaded or imported into the program which supports this Houdini engine and then you can create your uh, terrain geometry there and you can change your spline there and you don't have to go back to Houdini. This is amazing. Okay, but back to the river. The river geometry you just saw is just the river bed, like I said. The actual river is a little bit thinner and I added UVs to it and it's a little bit more subdivided and you can see that the colors are still there. The colors are used for uh, pointing out where I want to place particles on the top and the bottom of the cascades. And your regeneration is another thing, which is just amazing. You, you, you can generate the UVs dynamically perfectly fine along your spline. And this means, as you can see here, that you change the spline and you don't have to worry about your UVs at any time because they are just automatically created and it's just working basically. And this is something you don't want to go back if you experience this once. You don't want to go back in the uh, classic workflow where you change a pipe or change a river or something and you have manually recreate your UVs or redo them or tweak them. It's just working and this is, this is really amazing. At the bottom of this animation here you see how these UVs are changing and getting longer and making sure that they are always as perfect as they can be. Of course, it's not super easy to set up something like this, but it's totally worth it at the end. And there's another detail I added for this project. I wanted to have the riverbed a little bit darker to provide for the wet surface, because usual the sand in the riverbed would be a bit uh, more wet where the water is, obviously, and there it would be darker. And that's the same technique as before. From every point of this terrain, what you see here, I do a little ray cast upward, and if I hit my uh, river geometry, the thin one, then I colorize this point where I shot away from uh, yeah, in, in vertex color and later in the shader, I can darken these areas. And now it gets interesting because now we have to animate the water. And of course I could just uh, choose some textures and in the shader I could make them scroll over the surface with some UV offset animation. But there's a better technique. There is so-called flow maps. And these flow maps store for every pixel in which direction the water should flow. And with that you can do something like having obstacles in the water and the water flows around them. And it's super easy to create such flow maps in, in Houdini. For example, there's just one node which you connect uh, and connect your obstacles to and then boom, and suddenly the flow map reacts to your obstacles, which is really, really cool. Then with the Houdini engine in Unreal, you can change your river flow, you can change the obstacle count, for example, and then press one button and then your flow map is updated. You don't have to go back to into Houdini. That's the, the, the real advantage here. With the Houdini engine, you can just work in Unreal and stay in Unreal, except you are the technical artist who takes care of the uh, Houdini assets and then there's a bug, then of course you have to go back. But as a usual artist, they who, who just uh, uses the systems given by a technical artist, you could stay in Unreal all day and just work there, which is really, really cool. 
And the next one is, um, I wanted to have a little foam around the obstacles in the water. And to get this in Houdini, I basically uh, get a little distance field so that I know the distance to any objects. I bake this down into the vertex color combined with a little noise. And this is my foam map. And this I use in the shader later to distinguish where should be a little bit of foam and where should uh, be no foam. And in the shader, again, I structured this a little bit so that you have a bit more movement. Here you see the um, um, foam map, how it would look without any manipulation. And then I add a little bit more structure and you can see it looks a bit more dynamic now. And the foam structure at the cascades is basically simply vertex color trick as well. I masked out where the cascade is. Yeah, and there I show a different texture. That's basically everything. But foam on the water surface, this was not enough for me. I wanted to have some particles, some particle effects at the correct points. And I did not want to set them manually because this would be uh, not a fun work. So, as you know, I, I already took some notes in the vertex color where some particles should be placed. And this is exactly what I'm using now. So in Houdini, I check every spline from the river. I check every of these lines we used before from this river and I check the vertex color. And from that I generate a little point and then I generate a dummy cube. And these dummy cubes are really cool because you can export them to Unreal as an instance object, which means that you can drag and drop anything you want on them and this then gets replaced. So you can take a particle system, drag and drop it on one of these cubes, and then every of this cube type would be replaced by, for example, this particle systems. By the way, I just learned it's turquoise and not turquoise. So this cube is turquoise and the other is red, and you can um, yeah, replace them with particle systems separately. But this is only the particles on the cascades. We also have some obstacles, and there I would like to have some foam as well. And this is super cool. In Houdini, you can really easy with just one node detect intersections between geometry and where such an intersection happens, you generate a point. I use these points, reduce the amount and then place some dummy geometries there, which I can replace in Unreal as discussed before with the cascades. But for these particle systems, I did something different or something additional. As you can see, there are two different dummy geometries, these pink ones and these yellow ones. Because what I wanted is that those particle systems which are in front of the obstacle seen from the river flow should have first a different particle system, a little bit more stronger because there the water is crashing into the obstacle and so there should be a bit more force. And they are copying the normal of the obstacle geometry. And this is their orientation. But for the particle systems at the back of the obstacle, I wanted to copy the information from the, the flow map. And that's what I'm doing there. Basically, I'm sending from each of this point a raycast down. So you see there's a, there's a theme here. It's always about raycasts and getting data from the point where you hit something. And in this case, I read out the flow data, so the flow vector, and then orient these particle systems into that direction. And if you need more information about this, how to read out this data, I made a little tutorial about that as well in my Houdini channel. Yeah, and then later I can exchange these particle systems in uh, Unreal, like discussed before, and here you can see this. And uh, yeah, as said, I use a different particle systems, a little bit more stronger one for the ones uh, on the front of the obstacle and some smaller ones at the back. Okay, and I spoiled it a little bit before, but here you see how you get this asset into Unreal. In Houdini, you save this asset as HDA file, and this you can in import into Unreal. And if you have the Houdini engine installed, as soon as you drag and drop this uh, asset into Unreal, then it will compile the whole, the whole node tree and generate the geometry for you. And in Unreal, you, you can still change this spline and you can change every parameter you expose. So in my case, I can, for example, change the amount of obstacles or something. And by the way, this is really nice. If you have some materials in Unreal already and you want to assign them to your object, you don't have to do this manually. You can set up this in Houdini already, uh, give them the references to your Unreal materials, and then they are auto-assigned. And guess what? Yes, there's a little tutorial about this as well. That's it. 
I'm not sharp. Okay, that's it. So uh, you just learned how to make a river or ba the basic principle how a river could be made uh, in combination with uh, Unreal and Houdini. I hope you learned something and if you learned something or if you like this video then uh, what do YouTubers say? Uh, make a like there and the thing there and something with a bell. I have no idea. So you know what to do. And um, yeah, I hope you learned something and have a nice day and uh, see you soon. Hey, Simon here, and it's really, really hard to find a spot with just a white wall in the background because here there is a little bing and there is something else, so I have to really focus here.